The Good News of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Mark Chapter 6, beginning at the 45th verse At once Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and start back across from Bethsaida. But he stayed until he had sent the crowds away. Then he told them goodbye and went up on the side of a mountain to pray. Later in the evening, he was there by himself and the boat was somewhere in the middle of the lake. He could see that the disciples were struggling hard because they were rowing against the wind. Not before morning, Jesus came towards them. He was walking on the water and was about to pass the boat. When the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water, they thought he was a ghost and they started screaming. All of them saw him and were terrified. But at the same time, he said, Don't worry, I am Jesus. Do not be afraid. He then got into the boat with them and the wind died down. The disciples were completely confused. Their minds were closed and they could not understand the true meaning of the loaves of bread. Hello and welcome today to a warm morning in Kitaku, again in the north ward of the city. And today we are in Dojo Cho Park. Um, it's kind of as far as you can get north in Kobe without being outside of Kobe. And um, as you can see, this is a small park that is uh, it's quite new actually, and it's, it's built under these two lines, lanes of the expressway. Um, and it gives some empty space and there's place for people to come and sit and uh, soak up the sun, I guess. Um, and it is a, a sunny day, which is kind of why I'm sitting in the shade. Um, but there's a few bits of equipment there for children to play on. Um, the other side, of the, there's a small river on the other side of there is a, a big open space for, for ball games and so on. But it's, um, it's a very rural area around here, so I'm not sure who comes here. But there's a car park, so perhaps people drive and uh, come and use the, the facilities. There's also some places for uh, perhaps the older amongst us to do exercises and keep themselves fit. So it's a very good use of space. And if it wasn't so windy, um, it would be quite a nice day. Or if it wasn't so sunny, it would be quite hot, it would be quite a nice day. But um, still, it is nice to be out. Now recently, I read of a survey that was taken in America about the subject of AI and how Christians think that it can support the work of the clergy. The results were really interesting and showed that 86% of the respondents thought that counselling could be done better by a human, but 67% believe that administrative tasks would be performed better by AI, and 32% thought that AI would be able to write and give better sermons than humans. So should I call it quits and go home then? But while I guess that we all have some kind of thoughts or opinions about AI, perhaps many of us might have negative feelings or concerns about its potential or perhaps the speed that its growth is taking place. Maybe we worry that it will take our jobs or maybe we worry that it will take over the world. And we might feel scared because of that, because it is something new, because it is something different, it is something unusual. And fear, like that of the unknown, is one of the most common fears that we humans have. And I'm assuming that it probably affects most of us at some time. And that's okay, please know that's okay. Because as the Gospel reading we just heard told us, even Jesus' friends felt the same. So in that reading, we find the disciples out on Lake Galilee, and they see Jesus walking toward them. They don't feel joy at this, at seeing their leader. Rather, we're told, they only feel fear. Now let's imagine that we are them. Imagine that you are one of the disciples. You've had a long, hot day hanging around with Jesus, and now you're on the boat back home, when suddenly the sea becomes rough. 
the night draws on and the waves just get bigger and bigger and you start to feel scared because your boat is very small. And then what happens? What do you see? You see Jesus coming to you. No, he's not swimming, but rather he's walking on the water. That's not normal, you think, and it makes you even more scared. And so the disciples do as we would probably do. They screamed out, ah, thinking that it is a ghost. But this ghost talks to them and says, it's okay. It's me, it's Jesus. Don't be afraid. Then he got in their boat and the wind died down. I wish it would do the same today because it is windy here. The wind died down and they were amazed. And our reading ends by telling us that the disciples did not understand the meaning of the loaves of bread. And you may think that that's not connected to the storm at all. But we can understand what it means if we look back a couple of pa paragraphs in the Bible, because the reading before the one we had today was when the same disciples who were in the boat were with Jesus and they had witnessed him feeding thousands of people with just a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. They were part of that miracle, but they still couldn't understand how their Lord could come walking to them on the water. It was as if they had forgotten everything, because at that time they couldn't recognise this miraculous behaviour. All they could feel was fear, plain, human, cold fear, and that blocked out everything. It was a fear of the storm, it was a fear of seeing somebody walking on something they shouldn't be, walking on the water. And I'm sure there are times when we feel just like that. When our lives are stormy too, when everything is going wrong and upside down, things are hard and we don't like it. And one of the things which perhaps we don't like much or which can scare us a lot is the fear of change. Maybe at work, maybe in relationships, maybe in the world, or maybe in church. And for many, right now, I think there is a real fear of the change that's being caused by AI. Now if we search online, we'll find so much that's written about the pros and the cons of this technology, about how it's going to change everything for the better, or how it's going to eradicate humanity and cause the end of the world. But much of that, if we read it, will just cause us to worry even more and feel fearful about what the future might bring, because simply it is something that we are not used to. So I'm not going to tell you what to think about AI, although personally I believe that those who are developing it are using their God-gifted talents, and we should recognise that, even if it does lead to change. But anyway, I'm sure the same was said years ago about the mobile phone, about the internet, and where would we be without those? Where would we be without those today? But I'm getting carried away because today's sermon is not about how we need to embrace AI or fight against it. Rather, it is about what we need to do when we come across things like that that cause us to fear. And we will come across those kind of things, probably more often than we would like. For the disciples, seeing Jesus walking to them on the water scared them something rotten despite everything that they knew and everything that they had witnessed. But once he was in the boat with them, the storm ceased. And that tells us a lot. It tells us that in those times when we feel fearful or face something that's unknown, we need to remember that if we call out to God and invite him to be with us, he will come and be with us. He won't allow us to sink beneath the waves of our turbulent world, and he will never let us be alone. Rather, with him, with his comfort, with his encouragement, and with his peace, all our fears can be overcome. Or we could say that as people who believe in the love and goodness of God, we should also trust in his presence and his power, even 
in times of uncertainty. Because through that, our faith will help us conquer any fear. Oh, and by the way, that last bit, that was produced for me thanks to ChatGPT. So it's not all bad. And maybe I should look for a new job. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in those times when we are afraid, help us to remember that you are with us and so we have nothing to fear. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.